What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Dewan. So in our last two videos, we created a ping automation script to verify if devices are up or down in our network. When you're doing network automation or any type of software development, you need to have some type of version control. In this video, we're going to talk about the power of Git and GitHub, which is a local and remote repository. So why would you use Git? Well, for multiple reasons. One of the reasons is, let's say your computer crashes. You just lost all the hard work that you put into creating your pain script or your software development package. So using something like Git and GitHub will help you survive those hard drive crashes, server crashes, computer crashes, files accidentally deleted. Using Git can help you stay on top and keep your files up to date and current. And another thing, when you start doing software development and network automation, you'll run into a time when you'll make changes to a file and you will want to revert from that change that you made or you won't realize what changes you made. Git definitely helps you manage what changes happened and when. And in this video, we'll kind of walk through that together. So if you don't have Git installed and you need it installed, Here's the link to download Git and install it on your Windows computer, Mac computer, Linux computer. Git is widely available, and I think it may be installed on Linux by default. Don't quote me on that, but it could be. Um, the link will be in the description, and if you need me to make a video on how to download this and set it up, let me know in the comment section below, and I can get that done. It doesn't take long. Pretty simple. All right. Also, for the remote repository, if you have not already checked out my github check it out the ping script is up there if you have not already downloaded it i'm going to show you in this video how to clone this repo as well so let's go over here to our computer okay let's say i'm trying to clean up the files on my computer and i come in here to my directory where my ping script is and i delete it on accident all right it's been deleted cd dot dot and I do a DIR, you don't see the file. It's totally gone. Well, since it's gone, it's no longer on my computer, I, I can't get it back. There's nothing I can do. So what I can do is go to my remote repository, click on Pain Script. Cloning means basically you're downloading the Git version of the code from GitHub. So what you'll do is click the link in the description for the Pain Script, click on this button that says Code, and this is to download the normal way, which downloads to your downloads folder in your Windows computer. But the way we're going to do it is by using Git. So we'll click this button here. What we're going to do now is clone this repo back to my computer. So we'll do a Git clone and we'll copy that link we just downloaded. And now if we do a DIR, you can see now our ping script is back. Okay, so now that we have our repo clone, Let's check a git status to verify the branch that we have. And we are on the master branch. And if we do a git branch, you can see that's the only branch we have. We can create other branches to create new code, or we can develop in our master branch. In production, I recommend creating a feature branch. That's often what it call, it's called. You got your master branch and your feature branches. So your feature branches allow you to be able to write new code without modifying the master branch. In this video, we're just going to use the master branch, make a couple changes, and then show you how to add those changes to staging, commit those changes, and then push on the remote repo on GitHub. So, so one one thing I do want to I want to mention. So when I do a git status, notice that it says no nothing to commit. That means that no changes have been made. We're gonna open up VS Code, and then we're gonna modify a couple files, and you'll see these changes here in GitHub. So let's go in here and do a code dot. Those of you that use VS Code, you're gonna appreciate this. So if you just go on your repo that you, or your folder that you wanna open in VS Code and do a code space dot, this will open up VS Code in the directory that you like so we have vs code open notice in the lower left hand corner 
It says, Master, this is something that's really cool in VS Code because you can change it to your different branches right here in VS Code. Um, I like to just leave it the way it is because it can get kind of confusing. Whenever I like to modify or change my branches, I go here and on the command line because it's clear and it works better than I found in VS Code. So, but anyway, let's go in here and modify our results file and let's just put test in here and let's go in here and modify our tool. Now, when we come in here to back to our command line and we do a get status, notice this. You can see that there's been files that have been modified. Two files have been modified, but they have not been staged yet. So what you can do is go file by file. So I can do a git add results dot text. And now if we do a git status, you can see now that file has been added to staging, which will need to be committed in order to be um, added to you, well committed to your repo. We still need to add our tool.py file. Let's go back, clear the, clear the screen one more time. Do a git status. We need to add our tool.py file. Previously we did a, we added the individual file. One thing you can do is get add with a dot. I have to mention, if you do it this way, it will add every folder file that you have that's not been staged. I highly recommend that you verify and know exactly what you're adding to staging before you run this command. Because if you have the wrong files in there, they're going to get uploaded to GitHub. You could have banking information, whatever information in that folder. So make sure you know what you're doing before you do git add. Start out with just using the, the full file name when you're adding to staging. So we'll do a git add, do a git status. So now I have two files that need to be committed. So we'll do a git commit minus M. And what we're going to do is our message. This message is um, modify. And you can just do a simple message, but make sure it's clear and concise. So this was git example. We'll name that. And it has to be in quotes. The minus M lets you know that there's a message following. So boom. Now we have our commits. If we do a git status. You can see nothing to commit, but unless you know that your branch is ahead of origin master by one commit, the origin master is your remote repo. Now, if I didn't have a remote repo, I would be up to date, but now what I need to do is push this. See, it tells us now use git push to publish your local commits to your remote repository. This is the power of GitHub. So now, if we look at our repository locally, it does not match what's on the remote repo. If we want it to match, we have to do a git push. So we'll do a git push. And this is no what it's doing. Boom. And now if we do a git status, your branch is up to date with origin master. And if we come back over here to our remote repo, and let's see if we can see these changes real quick. So we come over here to our remote repo and do a re reload. Now you see how that changed from two commits to three commits. And if we come over here, you can see get example. My new PR is now added to my master branch on my re remote repo. Here's the SHA key. Every commit that you have has its own SHA. I, I think it's 256. It might be 512. I'm not sure, but it has its own SHA key in order for you to track your changes this key tracks the change so you can see right here this is the commit if we come here and we do a git log you can see this key and if we can line this up so you can see as you can see these two keys match that's the power of Git. Like nobody can modify a change and fake a change in Git because it uses this kind of like a security feature to, to be able to track and log changes to anything. You can use it for your configs in your environment. You can use it for your documentation in your environment, your home lab, 
Git allows you to track and know exactly what's been done and when in your repo files or documentation. It's, it's very powerful. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like to see more content like this, let me know, like this video, share it out. In the comment section below, also, if you're using Git, let me know. I would love to hear from you. Peace.